Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. And if you are new here on Fridays, we like to do things a little bit different. And today we're gonna do a little thing called Freak Out Friday, where we go back through the past week, see recommendations, stories we didn't cover, where people were having a big reaction to something in the news. Also, part of the reason for this change is I'm actually on a plane right now to another country. Don't know why I'm whispering, but here we go. Let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is this disgusting and horrifying situation that was covered by Metro. And be warned, just the headline alone will make your bones shake. Man team killed and virtually teabagged female journalist during shocking in-game rampage. That is a real article written by a real human being called Jasper Hamill. He is, according to their site, the science and technology editor, which I, I feel is either misleading or being very charitable based off of this article. But that said, let's let's see what happened in Jasper's own words. And because this is a very serious situation, uh, I, I feel like I, I need music and graphics to fit the tone. The unnamed man was showing off a demo of his game at the conference PAX East when he killed the woman and then squatted up and down on her dead body. This is known as teabagging for its similarity to a sex act in which a man places his testicles into another person's mouth. And then this incident was reported to the man's employer and now potentially his job is at risk. Now we initially learned about the situation thanks to Mike Futter who tweeted, friendly tip for devs showcasing games, don't intentionally team kill a journalist and then teabag them dot dot dot, especially if she's a woman. And then in response to that tweet, a gaming journalist by the name of Amanda Farrow tweeted, I said out loud in my headset and this is why I hate playing these kinds of games. Thanks for the demo, emotionless face. Then adding, now granted, he thought I was his quote dev buddy by accident, but holy shit was that a mistake. No PR around, just dude showing me a game and rolling the dice on being rude. Roll succeeds, target mismatch, roll for initiative. And here's the thing that I guess isn't really too shocking. I feel like we have uh, very much a culture of people getting offended on someone else's behalf. Amanda Farrow actually seems to be the least outraged from this incident. Tweeting, no one is naming names publicly. This is being handled privately and gently. It was an issue of professionalism and nothing more. The hubbub was a PSA and a reminder that this is unprofessional behavior. That's it. Then adding, can't believe that I have to say this. I am not interested in hurting devs because I was annoyed by by a lack of professionalism. What happened was unfortunate and a reminder of how not to conduct a press demo. And that's it, that's literally the story about the shocking in-game rampage. A woman was kind of bothered by a lack of professionalism, which it turned out was actually an accident because he thought it was his buddy. And then it became this ugly, toxic thing, and then if you go into the comments sections of a lot of places this is talking about, they think that it's her, and she's a man-hater, and she's being ridiculous, where it's, it's really, most everybody else. They also kind of feel like that's par for the course these days. Then we had people losing it on actress Elizabeth Hurley. Side note, just in advance, I'm gonna be biased on this story because I've loved Elizabeth Hurley for 15 years of my life. Have you seen her? Do you remember the movie Bedazzled? That was that was a great year for 15 year old Philip DeFranco. But you had people angry and shouting at Elizabeth Hurley for posting this picture with her son. The caption of the picture, happy birthday to my little prince. The light of my life for the last 16 years. And you had people saying that she was showing too much cleavage, that it was inappropriate, it was embarrassing. One writing, creepy showing off at your son's birthday, cover up, you're a mom. To which that last comment, I will say, uh, that is that is a big pet peeve for me. When there is this belief that just because someone has had a child, they automatically must become prudish and more conservative in, in the way they handle themselves, their dressing, and that they, they it's almost like they're not seen as a person anymore. They are just this thing. You're a mom, and people lock you into this box, and they shame you if you go outside of that box. And I find that to be an incredibly stupid and ignorant view to have, because you have a child, it doesn't mean that you should all of a sudden become this other thing. You are still a person. You're not just a mom, you're you. But also, if you're an avid Elizabeth Hurley fan like myself, of course, you follow her on Instagram, you know, in case you ever need to talk about her in future news stories, well then you know, this isn't really just a one-off situation. There are a lot of people that throw a lot of nasty shit her way, especially because she posts bikini pictures. And to those people, I would say, well, one, just in general, you should probably go fuck yourself for just randomly criticizing uh, seemingly women you follow. And also, two, if you just took a second to look into it, it's an incredibly smart business move on her side. She has a beachwear company and she is often tagging that beachwear company to convert that into sales. They like her, they like it, maybe they buy. But whatever, there was that. Then I had a lot of people ask me what I thought about Ethan from H3H3 Productions being called transphobic. And for anyone new here for the sake of transparency, uh, Ethan and I are friends or at the very least friendly. And if you didn't see this, it all started because of a, a joke tweet. He tweeted, my dick just touched the inside of the toilet bowl. There is no other solution. I'm cutting my dick off. Then later adding, I'm Ellen now, call me Ellen. And then someone responded 
response to that, they took a screenshot of those tweets and then said, H3, H3 is transphobic. Several times, there were a lot of retweets, a lot of people agreeing. And Ethan's response to that was to screenshot that tweet and say, hmm, is it too late to take the joke back if I already chopped my wiener off? And in response to this, in another tweet, a user wrote, this is how a petulant child acts, not a grown man that cares about all people, especially people of a group underrepresented and routinely targeted with physical and emotional abuse. Then because you quote, had to, many of your followers may harass an openly trans woman. And there's a lot of people going back and forth on these tweets, debating, arguing. Ethan then makes a video about all of this. And he talks about the lead up to the initial tweet about how he's super OCD and he's freaked out that his penis actually touched the inside of a toilet. And then explaining, yes, cutting your dick off in reaction to that would be excessive, but that is what the comedy is. And then he talks about how some of the people that were angry at him were angry because he said, my name's Ellen now. And you know, in a way that makes light of someone transitioning. And personally, I will say, I agree with a note that Ethan hits. Just because you were offended by a joke, doesn't mean that the joke was inherently offensive. And so unsurprisingly, because 98 times out of 100 times I support the person making the joke, I personally agree with Ethan here. Obviously, when you put anything out in the world, you cannot control how people receive it. Right, you have the general idea of the joke, the premise of the joke, that it's an overreaction because you're so OCD, you have the intent behind it, but ultimately, someone's just receiving it at face value. And how they receive that is going to be based off of their own personal life experience. But just because you are offended, that does not make you right. And I think you do a disservice to the, the trans community that do have very real struggles when, when you take uh, an obvious joke that someone's so disgusted by a public toilet seat, because of that, they're willing to, to, to chop it off and start their life as a woman. And say that that's an attack on the trans community, that that is, is minimizing in some way the, the trans experience. The trans community has to deal with very real problems. There are aggressors on many fronts, but Ethan's joke is not one of those things. I get that if you're in a vulnerable place, part of a vulnerable group, you feel constantly attacked that you would then just see this thing that, that could just be another thing on, on the pile that you have to deal with, and, and so you go at it this time. But having the reaction that we saw there, that, that's, not, that's not helping. But hey, that's my personal takeaway. Maybe you think I'm just another asshole too. That's fine. But actually, I want to pass the question off to you guys. What are your thoughts on this topic? Let me know in those comments down below. Then I got to give a shout out to Ryan Fish. He is facing four counts of second degree reckless endangerment, two counts of risk of injury to a minor, and one count of breach of peace because the now fired substitute teacher reportedly let students fight in class in what was called a fight club. Fish telling police he believes there were around four fights. Police also saying they have two videos as evidence. Fish telling police the truth is I'm an idiot and wanted to befriend them, adding, I'm immature. And in regards to the four boys ranging in age from 14 to 16, Fish told investigators, I would let them be teenagers and get their energy out. Adding, I will admit that I did at one point egg them on. Also reportedly when the school learned that this was happening, the principal confronted Fish. Fish downplayed the incident saying, boys will be boys. As far as some of the things that were specifically on the video, in one, Fish is reportedly seen and heard giving directions to the students who are fighting. Additionally, he moves a trash can out of the way so they can continue their fight. And that's pretty much the whole situation. Obviously he was fired in addition to the charges. But yeah, I don't know how to end this story. Is, is the moral of the story, don't conduct fight clubs when you're a teacher? I don't know. Are we actually at the point where we need that PSA? We actually we are. I remember years ago, we talked about a preschool fight club, which, uh, oh, the world's just stupid. Yeah, that's the end of it. The world's stupid. So there was that. And the last thing I want to talk about today that people have been freaking out about is the story around Richard Osborne Brooks. He's a 78-year-old pensioner. He lives with a 76-year-old wife. Two guys break into his house. They break into the house in the middle of the night. It's around 12 30, there is a scuffle. One of the burglars by the name Henry Vincent ends up getting stabbed with a screwdriver. He then reportedly fled the scene. He collapsed in the street and then later died. And what ended up happening is that Richard, the 78 year old homeowner who was fighting off a burglar, he was actually arrested for suspicion of murder. Now the good news that we've seen in the past week is that Richard will be facing no charges now. But according to reports, Richard and his wife are now having to hide. This because they fear there will be retribution attacks from friends of Vincent. Also, while this happened, apparently friends and family of Vincent set up a shrine for Vincent outside of the pensioner's house. And there have been instances of people going to that shrine, ripping everything down, stomping on everything, then friends and family setting up once again, the cycle repeating. That then resulting in reports that there are now cops standing guard, reportedly telling neighbors that if anyone takes down these flowers again, they're gonna be charged with breach of the peace. Now, as far as the defense for the shrine, a lot of people say, well, every family, all friends have a right to mourn, but others are saying, sure, but just not here. You're talking about a burglar who was reportedly the one who actually brought the screwdriver in the first place, who could have actually been the one that killed the homeowner. The shrine of the man who did that, so essentially commemorate the time that of this of this traumatic event in this person's life. That's the thing they have to all of a sudden see outside that changes the situation. And personally, I agree with that mindset.
mindset. I also find it outrageous, utterly ridiculous that a homeowner could have potentially been charged with murder for defending his home. That is pure insanity. What, you want the homeowner to just whip up a cup of cocoa, talk things out? Pure insanity. Once someone does that, they are no longer a person in my eyes. They are just a threat. But that is my personal takeaway, and I would love to know if you have the same thoughts, different thoughts on this story, and actually, because it's the last one, anything else I talked about today. Let me know those feelings in the comments down below. And that's where we're going to end things today. And remember, if you like this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you ring that bell, you turn on notifications, so you don't miss these daily weekday videos. But if you did miss yesterday's show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to watch today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, you can click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you in a little bit, but I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you why on Monday.